Alright, so, let's be honest. You had to know this was coming at some point. I thought I'd just do a short little, uh, flight today. Uh, just basic takeoff. Maybe, I don't know, five, six miles, land, different airport. Um, first I'll go over a couple of the control things in here, though, that I noticed. Uh, so if we go options, controls, um, yeah, I got a whole bunch of stuff in here. Um, one of the things I absolutely did here was change my control sensitivity. You can do that up here. I've got these dialed down quite a bit. Uh, minus 40, because I noticed uh, the controls in this were insanely twitchy. Um, I have no dead zones. You might not need one, depending on uh, the stick you have. If you're using a stick with potentiometers, you might need dead zones. Uh, didn't bother doing anything on my Z-axis on my purple stick. That's the um, uh, oh, little lever on the front of the stick, On uh, depending on the airplane, on the fighter jets used for different things. I don't have it bound anything in this game. Um, on the... What do I do on my pedals here? Where are my pedals? Pedals are this thing. Uh, so, pedals... Um, I dialed the pedals down just a bit in this, as I actually have them dialed... Uh, I put on a uh, exponential curve, like so an S-curve in my CH software. So, it's actually not too bad now. It was really freaking impossible uh, when I started. And then... Uh, these just got mapped to uh, my, my brakes, so they're uh, they're fine that way. Um, and then the other one I've really dialed down uh, is this one, my trim axes, because yeah, I'm at minus 82. I'm actually thinking of backing that off even more. I'm really not happy with the way that's like trimming in this game seems to be a colossal pain in the ass. I'm half tempted to uh, reset that back to um, binary buttons to see what happens, but um, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll play with it a little more. Uh, my throttle, uh, my two throttle axes are both set normally, uh, and I don't actually have any or uh, these bound anythings yet. Probably bind one of them to my fuel mixture or something at some point. And uh, same with that one. That's actually just zooming my view right now. Which is fine. Uh, but anyway, so that's something you might want to consider if you're having trouble controlling your plane. Uh, adjust your sensitivity curves a bit. So anyway, let's go to our world map. It's a lot of airplanes. We're just going to do a nice little short hop. Uh, where are we? Sarnia, no, we're not going to fly from Sarnia. I'm looking at the wrong area. There we go. Who's out here? Oh, someone flying out of Eden. No, nifty. Well, we're going to fly to Collingwood, I think. Uh, we'll start... Sure, we'll start on ramp 4. It says our departure there. We're going to fly in a DV-20. Uh, we only have that one livery. Weight and balance. Uh, no, I don't want another fat ass flying with me. Yeah, do that. Jack the fuel up. That's fine. Weight and balance is within our acceptable limit. Which is all good. I weigh nothing, so that's why I put that down there. Don't make failures. Don't care. We'll change our tail number to an actual Canadian tail number. That's actually a DV20 or a DA20 tail number as well. I know that because I've flown it. Uh, so go back here. And we'll just do a nice short hop up to uh, Midland Airport here. Says arrival. Alright, so one thing we're going to want to do is pick our runways. So Collingwood, um, here's where you're actually going to want to have a little uh, piece of paper or something handy just so you can actually write this down. So Windsor 235 and Collingwood Airport has uh, 13, 31, 02, and 20. Now, it's a two knots. Um, so 235, 31, that's 
almost 100 degrees off. 13, that's also almost, actually that is exactly 105 degrees off. So that's going to be um, not desirable either way, particularly. Um, you know what, we'll take off on runway 31. You know, the wind's coming from 235, so that's 270 that way, so 235's about like this. So we're going to have a bit of a headwind. Um, it's going to be mostly across them, but who cares? It's two knots. Whatever. So we're going to be calling with airport runway 31. Uh, so you're going to want to jot down runway 31 on your piece of paper. And right now we just got this set direct GPS. We're not actually going to fly direct. We'll do a nice little roundabout thing around here, around Wasaga Beach and up. So 221 at two knots. So 221 is uh, absolutely, we are going to land on runway 16. On here. That's still gonna give us mostly a crosswind, but I should do one runway 16 there. Those are coming from 221, so yeah, it's going to be a 90 degree crosswind. We might have a slight tailwind. I mean, again, two knots. I'm not really worked up about that. So we'll say runway 16 for this, which is fine. We can deal with that. Uh, another thing you're going to want to do is go to your nav log and make note of these, particularly the airfield elevation at your descending airport. Uh, so Collingwood, 723 feet, and Midland is 750. The reason we want to know that is because we want to know uh, what height we're going to be flying a traffic circuit. You fly a traffic circuit 1,000 feet above ground, airfield elevation 1750, so we're going to be flying our traffic circuit at 1,750 feet. Just jot that down. Our cruise is set to 2300, that's fine. We're doing an 8 mile trip. Roughly, so that's fine. We'll do 2300. Okay, so that's fine. I know basically where it is. I don't really care about what the GPS says. As long as we know we're flying 1750. So that's that. Uh, flight conditions. Um, I'm happy just using live weather for this, honestly. It's not a bad day out. Cloud cover I don't think is too high. All players say, yeah, that's fine. It's live tracker check, so it's like, yeah, let's just go AI, all players, yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Alright, still let this guy down and uh, make some core edge. A lot of people have been bitching about the loading times in this sim. I'm guessing most of those complaints are coming from people who don't play flight simulators. The loading times in this are not bad. Alright, CNY3, Collingwood Airport. Yeah, I'm just get my track IR set here. There we go, go away, don't care, and... You I'm going to kill when I start rolling, because you're right in my way. Um, Alright. So, we're here, we're stopped. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole proper startup checklist in this, I'm just going to kind of wing it a bit. Uh, let's master switch on, fuel pump on. Uh, we can leave the choke off because we're doing a, oh, a cold start. You need it on if you're doing a warm start. Prop's fine. So we'll start the engine. I never remember these things starting up so easily. Ever. Alright, so that's on. So we'll turn on our avionics master. Uh, fuel pump can come off. Strobes. Positions. All right. Theoretically, you can go through your whole pre-flight check if you really wanted to. You know, stick left, left aileron up, right aileron down, stick right, right aileron up, left aileron down, stick forward, elevator down, stick back, elevator up, rudder full deflection right, full deflection left, no interference, yeah, yeah, yeah. We know. Oh, my 
track IRR smooth. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I gotta adjust the sensitivity curves on my track IRR a bit too. All right, now normally we go to a run-up uh, properly, be but our oil temp is already coming up to temperature, and um, the oil temperature does not come up that fast in this airplane, not even close. But that's okay. That means we don't have to go do a run-up. Yay us. Okay, so let's uh, tune our radio. Uh, see, I already forgot which runway we were departing on. 31. Select runway for takeoff. Runway 31. Thank you. Announce taxi. Charlie November Yankee Tree Traffic Diamond Charlie Foxtrot Foxtrot Lima Uniform is taxiing to runway 31. Alright. Yes. Take off our parking brake. And like I said, I'm going to kill both these guys because I'm going to roll right through them. And brake truck. Brakes work. And here I'm steering with the rudder. Chop. I should not be able to steer with the rudder on this airplane at this speed. The uh, the Katana's got a cast steering nose wheel. There is no way it should steer with the rudder uh, going this slow. All right, so we're going to runway 31, which is uh, unfortunate because this is runway 13. So we're just gonna backtrack all the way up for active. There's a 4,000 foot runway, so we got almost a mile to freaking go. Which way is that windsock going? I'm not convinced these windsocks actually show accurately. Yeah, see right there, the windsocks showing that tank them into a headwind right now. Eh, whatever. I think every time I've flown out of this airport, that windsock has said the exact same thing. Those clouds look kind of low. That sucks. There's no, uh, there's no radio call for, uh, Backtracking. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have done live weather. Taken off from the grass strip. Yes, and it looks like that windsock is telling me I'm going to have a headwind. So that's the wind changed 30 or 40 degrees, uh, one end of the runway to the other. Oh no, that one's saying the same thing as the other one. Hmm. Well, maybe I'm just an idiot. Then. Oh, that's a possibility. Oh no, that's okay. That one is saying. Yep, so we are going to be taken off with a headwind, according to that windsock. Uh, whatever. There, let's just slow her down. And turn and brake. Got lined up on the runway. There we go. Uh, we're going to park to the east. Charlie November Yankee Tree Traffic Diamond Charlie Foxtrot Foxtrot Lima Uniform taking off runway 1 Tree East Departure. Line lights on, fuel pump on, prop RPMs full forward. All right, let's go. Now, plane's going to immediately yaw to the left because of propeller slipstream. It's fine, we just counter with right rudder. Oh, whoops. Forgot to drop my flaps. There we go. 
Now our flaps are on takeoff. Fifty-two, rotate, hold her in the ground effect. And sixty-five, start our climb. Flaps. Right, and we're just going to climb to about a thousand feet. Fuel pump can shut off. There we go. Okay, let us hold our 65 here as we fight with the trim in this game because the trim is so hypersensitive and beyond annoying. Keep our runway heading. Pull our RPM back a little bit. There we go. This is not a fast climbing airplane. Start gentle turn to the right. Climbing turn, do not exceed 15 degrees. You guys can see how little I'm actually moving my joystick here. Like, I could literally be tapping this thing with my pinky. Okay, we're approaching our cruise altitude at 2300 feet. Let's lower the nose. So we're level. Pull our manifold pressure back to 24 and RPM down to 21. Let our speech come up, trim nose down. There we go. Now we fight with the trim trying to keep the plane level. Let's avoid flying over water if we can. In theory, this plane should cruise around 95 knots. So if I pick, if I trim for 95 at this power setting, we shouldn't be climbing or descending. And we're still climbing a wee bit, but just a bit.
to be Edenvale over there. Yep. Not a Wasaga River there. where I'm sitting in this thing it's uh, one way to always make sure you're flying level is just to make sure you got the same amount of sky above each wingtip but uh, just where my seated position is with the track IR I've got the stupid uh, ventilation frames blocking the wingtips so I gotta look at the horizon and you know actually fly the plane I haven't learned in this game yet how to actually tune the radios because the other thing I normally do with this since I have uh, two columns, unless the second one's just for navigation. I don't think so. Um, but I tune that into the en route frequency and then that into my airport frequency, or aerodrome frequency. There we go. I seem to have got at least the trim more or less sorted out. Like I can. I just took my hands off the controls, and other than the weird tendency to roll left, which I can't figure out, we're flying straight and level, which is, or at least level, which is nice. You can just see Nancy Island. Oh no, it's not there. Nancy Island will be back there a bit. Under wing. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there's Nancy Island. Cruise track, yep, gauges green. We're good. So another annoying thing, or thing that annoyed me is the actual katana has all these circuit breakers are in rows over here, um, and I'm not sure why they put them down here. I looked uh, at a lot of cockpit pictures, and I could not find a, any version of the katana, or the eclipse, or the evolution, or whatever other versions of the DV20 there were that had the circuit breakers along this area right here. So I'm not really sure why they're there. Also, this cockpit's more reminiscent of a C1. And uh, yet we have a constant speed propeller, which is uh, more reminiscent of the A1. So, and like these windows are for the C1, the A1 didn't have those uh, back triangular windows there. So this seems like a uh, bastardized version of the DV20, but whatever. Airport should be over there somewhere. Now what does our nav thing say? Bearing 27, range 7 miles. So bearing 27 should be right over there. I'm surprised I can't see the beacon. Ah, there it is. There's the airport. Alright, so we know we're going to be flying a left-hand circuit for runway 16. So we can tune our radio now. Midland to Romeo, there we go. Six, that would I wrote down. I did write down one six. We're gonna be landing full stop. We'll announce our position. Yeah, we're still a chunk. We'll announce our position. We're five miles out.
I honestly can't remember the descent procedure for the DA-20. In my defense, it's been... I can't do the math. 15, 16, 17 years since I've been in the cockpit of one of these things. A long time. I was actually impressed that I remembered the 2421 for the manifold pressure and RPM. It's amazing how some things they drill into your face or into your head and you just never leave you. Alright, so we're four miles out. Sure, we'll announce our position. Charlie Yankee Echo Echo Traffic Diamond Charlie Foxtrot Foxtrot Lima Uniform 5 miles south 2,300 feet inbound to land runway 16. Nice. I'm not going to start my descent yet, i got plenty of time. We'll turn into uh, the airfield in a minute. We want to enter the circuit at 1,000 feet AGL, which will be about 1,750 feet. So we only got to lose about, what is that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 700 feet. It's not going to be hard. Now I'm going to probably end up overflying Boker Field here, which normally you shouldn't do, but I'm pretty sure that's just a field on some guy's backyard. I've driven by it multiple times, and uh, yeah, I think it's just a field in some guy's backyard. Uh, Alright, we can turn in. And sure, we'll start descending now. And we'll avoid overflying Boker Field here. That'll take us in a little close, so cut out a bit. There we go. Now we're a little low. My bad. That's right, I'll be to regain that altitude. We have 1750, so this is our circuit altitude of 1000 feet AGL. And we're entering our downwind leg. Uh, probably still a tad close. Ideally, in a low wing plane, or at least this one, I imagine most are similar, you want the runway to intersect your wing somewhere between, ideally, about two thirds span, uh, no closer than half, and no further than out of your wing tip. And that's if you're flying 1000 feet AGL, or 1000 feet above field elevation, um, that'll be about your uh, right spot. Charlie Yankee Echo Echo Traffic Diamond Charlie Foxtrot Foxtrot Lima Uniform is on downwind runway 16. All right, we're still angled outward a bit because I'm putting in a little more distance because I'm still a little close. Uh, you know what? So let's angle out a little more. That's better. Still a tad close, but that's fine. We'll turn back and fly parallel with the runway, which is a heading of 3-1. Actually, no, it isn't. Sorry. It's 3-4. Uh, My bad. That's why I was getting confused. So when I thought I was flying away from it, it wasn't. Okay. Well, we're still a tad close. That's all right. Yeah, we're going to have a really short base leg here. It's probably just going to be a turn, quick level on base, and then right around in the final. I didn't actually even know there was an airport over there until I saw it in this game, funny enough. Oh, we're a little low again. Is our position? Uh, should we extend a bit? Yeah, 45 degrees is good enough. Okay, so now what we're going to do... Full RPM, throttle back, and keep our nose up. We don't want to drop here. Our objective here is to lose airspeed. And once we lose, once we get our speed down, parallel, drop flaps, and we're still too fast. Gonna turn into final. Landing speed is going to be 60. It's your approach speed in this airplane. A 
There we go. Now we got our 60. Now we just got a trim. Trim for 60. Now we're a little ways out, actually. That's, that's going to give us a nice long approach. We're, actually, we're, not, we're not looking bad. Oh, the other things I should have done. Fuel pump on, car cute on. I'm a terrible pilot. And on final. Charlie Yankee Echo Echo Traffic Diamond Charlie Foxtrot Foxtrot Lima Uniform is on final runway 16 to land. We cut in a bit there. I don't know if we're drifting. Bit of a crosswind. That's right, Will's correct. Always remember, pitch is airspeed, throttle is altitude. We're not descending fast enough, all right? Full flap it is. There we go. Winds are so light, we should not have needed to do a full flap approach, but like I said, I'm a terrible pilot, so we'll do a full flap approach. And I'm still too high, but I mean, this is a long enough runway, it's not going to matter that much. Yeah. Should drop full flap sooner. That's fine. Flare. Oh, flare too high. Got the hold off. There we go. Right, we're not going to stop in time for that. So brakes. All right. So first objective, let's get off the runway ASAP. The runway. We'll announce a clear runway. Charlie Yankee Echo Echo Traffic Diamond Charlie Foxtrot Foxtrot Lima Uniform is clear of the runway. Uh, we'll leave the position and strobes on. Fuel pumps off. Car peak can cut off and flaps can come up. There we go. All right, let's go tax to a landing area. So the real Midland Airport, uh, this building right here is actually the Zen Air factory. Uh, that's where uh, Zen Air builds their little, uh, I can't remember what they call it, it's a um, tail dragger, or no, sorry, it is a trike, uh, but it's a uh, STOL ultralight. Really nifty little airplane, um, but that's their factory. Uh, that's the airport terminal for Midland. That tower is not actually there. It's beside this building. Uh, Midland also does not have a random taxiway light in the middle of the taxiway or apron. All right, at least those are in the right spot. That is actually where the fuel bowsers are. Park beside the Cessna. Yeah, straighten out a bit. There we go. Right in front of the Midland District Model Railroad Club. That's the old airport terminal, it's now the Model Railroad Club. Wait, building also does not look anything like that. It's a nice deck out back and everything. Anyway. Parking brake on. Uh, position lights off, strobe lights off. Um, we're good to shut down. So, let's go. Uh, Avionics Master off. 
Mission off. Master off. I do like that you can hear the gyro spin down. That's kind of cool. I don't think I forgot anything. Oh, I can actually close the fuel shut off. That's nifty. Nope. Woo. Hit the wrong button. Uh, no, that's not what I want. There we go. And yeah, that's our flight and our DV-20. That's a terrible parking job. Yes, I'm a terrible pilot. I know. 